Hi, this is Enzo with Cybercraft, and today we're gonna to talk about how to know when you're ready to take your exam. Now, this could apply to any exam. I get questions all the time, how do I know when I'm ready? We're gonna use CompTIA Security Plus as an example, but this could apply to any one of your certification exams. I definitely recommend using these steps to figure out if you're ready and give yourself confidence going into the test. So let's start off uh, by looking at the exam objectives. Now CompTIA does a very nice job with all of their certifications in breaking out in the exam objectives exactly what you need to know for the test. Everything you find in the exam objectives will be in the test bank in some form or another. So if we take a look at the topics here, you can find all of the materials, all of the concepts that will be on the exam. So what I tell my students is to look at the exam objectives and take a look at each of these bullet points. Once you find one of these bullet points, explain that concept, try and teach that concept to somebody else. Now that could be a significant other, that could be your friend. Uh, if you're alone, that could be a plant, that could be your pet, you know, your cat. Uh, it doesn't matter. The idea though is to explain it and teach it. Now the reason I say that is because of Bloom's Taxonomy, and you may have never have heard of Bloom's Taxonomy, but it's it's a uh, hierarchy of understanding, and it was developed by a psychologist named Bloom. He developed this, this uh, taxonomy, this hierarchy, to structuralize how people understand things. So basically, he came up with, okay, well, if people, as they progress in their understanding of a concept, they're going to be able to do more and more things. So those, the abilities that they are going to possess or what they can do with the information is going to be described by different verbs and that's why you see all these different verbs at each of these tiers so you start at the very basic level of understanding which is to remember to remember means to be able to recall facts or basic concepts so you can define duplicate list memorize or repeat or state those concepts then as you move up to understanding what the concept is you can then classify describe discuss explain identify locate, recognize, report, select, and translate. Now the CompT exams will have questions that range in the understanding and the apply tiers of Bloom's taxonomy. So with the apply taxonomy, you're able to execute, implement, solve, use, demonstrate, interpret, operate, schedule, or stitch. Now at this level of understanding, what this means is if you're able to apply the information, you should also be able to explain the information. By explaining the information, you're taking the information you already understand and you're applying it into an example or into a level that can be understood by somebody at the remembered tier. So you're, you're reusing the information in a different way and by doing that, it helps you understand the information a little better. That's why when you teach a topic, oftentimes you learn the topic a little better. Sometimes, some of you may have heard the phrase, the best way to learn is to teach. So that's where that comes from. It's all related. So what I do recommend is with the exam objectives, you take a look, you go to each one of these and you say, okay, uh, non-repudiation. Well, what does non-repudiation mean? And you may recall, okay, well, I know non-repudiation. And that's not really good enough. That's not what you wanna be doing. You don't wanna look at non-repudiation and say, oh, I know that. You wanna say non-repudiation. Okay, well, that is the ability to track a user's actions or to ensure that a user cannot deny that they have taken an action. That's non-repudiation. And when you explain it that way, you have to ensure by articulating the concept that you truly understand it. So you're at that apply tier of Bloom's taxonomy. So I definitely recommend using this technique and just go through each of these exam objectives. You could do this for any CompT exam. All the CompT's exams will have exam objectives and you should be able to go through, every one of these topics will be on the test. Either, it might not be on your test that you get because it's randomized, but it's gonna be in the test bank. So you're gonna have every one of these topics. Now, another thing I also recommend is at the end of the exam objectives, CompTIA does a nice job of breaking out the acronyms. These acronyms will be on your exam or in the exam objectives. So you definitely take a look at these acronyms, acronyms and abbreviations and understand all of these. Do the same thing with these as you would with the uh, exam objectives because oftentimes in the questions, you'll see these as they're written out here. IPS, IR, ISP, KEK. 
that's how you're going to see on the test. You're not going to see it written out as key distribution center or key encryption center, uh, key encryption key. So you need to understand those acronyms and abbreviations as they're listed here. Those are two really good techniques for a comp T exam. Now, let's talk a, lo a little bit about the, the course content that you're going through. If we take a look at the course content, first off, if we go to, uh, if you go to cybercrafttraining.com and you get one of our courses, you're gonna get my full video course. Every one of these topics on the left is a different video where I explain every single concept. You're gonna have checks on learning as you go through, quizzes per each domain, and at the end of the course, I give you uh, all these practice exams to test your knowledge. So you have everything you need to pass your exam right there. So there's checks and knowledge built in already, which is how I like to design the course. But if you're using the official course materials from CompTIA, which you do get whenever you sign up for the complete course with us or any of our live training classes, what I recommend, and this applies not only to this course content, but also when you're reading a book. So if you say you have a Security Plus study guide that you bought, what you want to be doing is after you've read your book or after you've read the course content, go back through and look at the key phrases, okay? Key phrases are going to be usually in black or in this case, in the CompT environment, they're highlighted in blue. So these are phrases you should understand. And oftentimes in these study guides, you'll see these phrases highlighted or underlined or italicized, whatever consistent formats done with that particular book, that's, those are the ones that you should really pay attention to. Okay, so active security control. And if you, the nice thing about this environment is you can click on that. If you forget what active security control is, you get a little pop-up box that tells you. Or something that is in line. What does in line mean? Okay, so this is a good way of checking your knowledge and ensuring that you understand each of those tools. So I'm not saying reread everything. I'm saying skim by here, look at, okay, passive security control. I understand what that is. Uh, active security control, okay. Inline, that is a uh, device that is placed so that network traffic have to run through the device as part of the, the path. Uh, test access point, okay, that is uh, a device designed to uh, as a monitoring port essentially, and then uh, SPAN, switch port or mirror port, got it. Okay, so this is what you're trying to do when you read through the material there. Fail open, fail closed. So all of this, that's the type of uh, scanning you wanna do, and that took me about 30 seconds to do this whole page, okay? Now the nice thing about this environment too with the CompTIA, if we take a look at one of those lessons, like lesson five, uh, we go to the practice section, we're gonna have a full series of practice questions on lesson five, so that's really helpful. But, you know, this applies, the same technique applies to any type of environment, any type of book or resource that you may be using with your study guides. So take a look at those key terms, highlight in, in black or italicized or underlined, and then make sure you understand each of those, explain those, just like you would with the exam objectives, explain those out loud. Now, another major way to practice is with your assessment, okay? Or assessments, if you sign up for cybercrafttraining.com, we give you multiple assessments. Uh, but with the assessments, you know, checking your scores. Are you scoring 90% or above? That's what I would recommend. 90% or above uh, to get a full understanding of where you're gonna be because you have to, if we take a look at the exam objectives, you're gonna have to score 750 out of 900 for your test, okay? So, I would recommend in your practice scoring 90% or above. Uh, and they don't have that listed out here, but usually that's the point system that they go off of. It's maximum 90 questions. The other thing I've been hearing, I want to dispel this is, okay, do I need to know my ports and protocol numbers? Yes, you absolutely need to know your ports and protocol numbers for any CompT exam. And you might not see them in the exam objectives, because it's the most basic thing that you would need to understand. Uh, you need, and it's gonna be implied in the questions that you're asked. So I get comments sometimes as saying people, or people will say, the ports of protocol numbers aren't in the exam objectives. I don't need to study those, right? So listen, the ports and protocol numbers are part of your basic understanding of how computers and networks communicate. Okay, a lot of, if you go to Network Plus, you'll see ports and protocol numbers. Security Plus, assumes that you understand 
ports and protocols. So definitely understand your ports and protocols for any CompTIA certification. You should know those as a cybersecurity professional. You don't have to know all of them, but you should know the basic ones. Okay, so you definitely need to study these because you'll get a question saying, okay, we have uh, DNS traffic coming into the computer and then we have you know, this type of activity or LDAP activity uh, going into this computer. Uh, what are the firewall rules we'll need to configure for this, this, and this? And if you don't know that DNS is 53, for example, then how, what, how are you going to know what firewall rule to implement? Okay. The other thing I definitely recommend is understanding your PBQs. Okay. You can watch my videos. If you want more PBQs, take a look at uh, the courses that we have on CybercraftTrain.com and my PBQ walkthrough videos. And we give you all the official PBQs to practice with. So I definitely recommend if you're looking for PBQs, you get all the official PBQs in the CompT environment, which are great. You get to practice with them ahead of time. Um, but the PBQs are very important. Some people I even seen comments like, I thought it was okay to skip the PBQs entirely, just focus on multiple choice. If you skip the PBQs, you will probably not pass your exam. It's very rare where you can skip your PBQs only if you get like one or two PBQs by chance on your exam that you may be able to not answer those questions at all, but then you better answer every single multiple choice question correctly. What I do recommend is when you take your exam, you, you don't answer the PBQs right away. You answer the multiple choice first, then you go back and then you answer your PBQs because you'll know exactly how much time you have left on in the exam once you've answered your multiple choice, then go back to the PBQs. You know, okay, I have half an hour left in my exam. I have four PBQs. That means I got about uh, seven or eight minutes per PBQ. So you can time it out that way. So definitely answer your PBQs on your test. You should be answering every single question without a doubt. But the main things are, I definitely recommend using the exam objectives. Now, some certifications don't have as robust of exam objectives, but that information is usually in the glossary of a study guide. It serves as the same purpose. Go to the glossary, understand all the concepts, and do the same type of exercise. So with these techniques, uh, taking a look at the exam objectives or the overview of the topics and explaining each topic, uh, taking your assessment tests, trying to score over 90% in your assessment tests, uh, taking a look, rereading the course material, and finding those key phrases or key terms in underlined or bold or italicized and focusing on those, not necessarily reading the whole book. Uh, those are all very good ways to ensure that you have, that you're ready for your test. And that should give you confidence going into the exam because your confidence level is going to affect how well you do on the test. It's gonna affect how nervous you are, your ability to recall the information. So you definitely want to build that confidence up ahead of time. But if you sign up for one of Cybercraft's courses, we have a first time pass guarantee with all of our live classes. So you get that peace of mind. You should have that confidence going in when you go through one of our classes uh, because we guarantee you're going to pass and we will pay for your second test if you don't pass on the first try. But I hope this is helpful for you if you're studying for your examination, whatever the exam that is. I appreciate you watching my video. Hope you have a great day today. Thank you.